All right, guys. Well, old blue cord here. I'm just gonna do a little video on Dana 44 axle in my International Scout. Uh, we had trouble with the bearing being bad, and I got the uh, bearing race removed. It goes here, and then there's also a locking collar that goes here. And you can see I actually nicked the shaft by mistake. That's okay. Anyway, discussion was got a brand new set 10 bearing, bearing. Timken calls this a unit bearing. And I don't know how well you make that out, but it just says made in USA in two spots there and there. So, yeah, and there's your new locking ring. And it came with a seal. So, and then you also have this retainer plate that holds everything together. So, okay, so the discussion is. If you don't have a press fit, your axle shaft possibly could walk out because really the only thing that holds everything in is this plate. Now, this plate hole, and it fits, it goes right on the axle like this, holds everything in there, really is pretty big. So as you can see over the bearing, the center race is still sticking out. And also, the collar will go right through it. So, yeah, collar will go right through it. Okay, so we kind of understand that. So, you need to put your... This is where it gets kind of... I'm going to step back and look at it again. This is, this is kind of where you need to be careful. So, what I did, and uh, you'll just have to... It's going to be hard for me to do it, but I went ahead and mic the bearing. surface and I also mic'd where the collar was which are the same they appear to be tapered but I don't believe they are and got pretty accurate mics here only reason why I put it in the lathe is just to hold it it's, it's not clamped in it's just easier to work with so I got uh, 156 5 and right on the collar surface I got about 165 156 5 also so uh, a few ten thousandths difference in here I got a five 156.3 in a couple spots. Now I did mic the inside of the bearing, the inside of the collar, and got the same number, 155 and 1. 550,000. Sorry about that. So 155, 155. Problem is press fit, and press fit means your bearing needs to be smaller than this surface here to get what you call a press fit. And a press fit means it's on there tight, it's not just gonna slide off. So I don't know if that makes sense to a lot of people. If you work, if you machine shafts and burns, you understand press fit, there's charts for it, uh, there's call outs for size of the bearing. So for me, just kinda, since I know it's an inch and a half shaft, I would think this press fit would be closer to like seven thousandths without looking at a chart, uh, especially with this collar. Bearing probably five to seven thousand. You don't want to go too too tight on your press because then your bearing will be locked up, right? So doesn't look too good. It looks like I only got about a thousand press. And so you know, a guy lost his axle shaft the other week and he just had got the bearing put on. So if somebody puts this bearing on without looking at these numbers, it's possible that this collar is just gonna slide off. I mean a thousand's press and that stuff heats up, that's coming out, the bearing's coming off. That plate's not going to hold a lot in there. I mean, we think this plate, you know, I used to think this plate, I lost an extra shaft more than once. I used to think this plate was the whole Hail Mary. Uh, it's not. And I have made these plates before with a smaller hole. I can't remember what dimension I used because obviously it has to go over the shaft and not scrape. But at the same time, uh, I'd want it to kind of catch this inner race too because if you start losing your bearings the inner race might save you if you had it captured at least that's my theory uh, so yeah not too happy about that thousands press I'm gonna go ahead and press this stuff on uh, I may do a return video on this also I'm gonna look also I read the instructions and that's probably important because this has come from Timken and I'm gonna post it right here Clean axle, remove all the nicks and burrs. And it actually says the cone and locking collar seat should provide 1,000th minimum interference fit. And that's a press fit for the cone and 4,000th minimum interference fit for the locking collar. 
So you want a thousand on the burn, which I have, but four thousand on the locking collar. I don't have four thousand. That's my math way off. No, and I don't. I don't count uh, ten hundred. I don't count the five five ten thousands because I mean it's that's not even temperature controlled. I mean I'm just using hand mics. I mean, a lot of guys think they can get that measure down that close, but yeah, good luck. Uh, so, yeah, I don't have four thousands press on my collar, that's for sure. So I'm gonna have to make some decisions here. What I want to do? I thought about putting another lock collar right here, and I think that's a crutch. I don't think I really want to do that, but you could get like a locking type collar and 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 lock it here. I can't see that really holding anything much. Locking collars generally don't hold without a press fit. So, all right. So anyway, clean this up pretty good. I had put this on a lathe. You can tell where the burn's been turned right there. Uh, I'm not really worried about that because that's actually probably going to help my the press fit on my uh, bearing with that kind of rough spot. Uh, but yeah, everything looks pretty good there. And the axle sh shaft and the seal surface, not bad. That's the seal surface where you see that mark. So not bad, not great. Uh, this rear end is, needs to be totally rebuilt. I know that this is just going to get me rolling, uh, and uh, we'll go more into that someday. But anyway, so yeah, so this is, uh, and then we'll talk a little bit more about Dana 44 shafts probably in another video. This one's running already about six minutes, but this is a half ton vehicle, so it has one single tapered bearing. All the load is straight down here on your bearing. So if you overload this axle, there's a good chance you're going to snap, probably right in this neck down area, I believe. So that's why these are only rated for about half ton. I see them rated for like 34 inch tires. As it used to be, they were only rated for like 31s, then it was 33s, and then it seems like every 10 years the number goes up a little bit. But I, you know, this is a good tough act. This is a good Dana 44 is a good tough rear end, but. You want to be conscious, especially if you're hauling a lot of weight and putting a lot of pressure down on this. Now, I don't haul weight, but I have a lot of rotational force, obviously, because i got a big motor and stuff. So, uh, But that's really hurting the ring gear more than anything. But anyway, that's a little discussion on half-ton axles. So it's 5-bolt. That's going to tell you it's half-ton rated. And that's been good since the mid-60s, I believe, with that 5-bolt, 8-bolt deal. But you should, can look that up. So, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and press this all back on. Uh, thank you for looking at all that stuff. Yep, Timken instructions, Timken Baron. Uh, not a Timken seal, but looks like a pretty good seal. Yeah. So, all right, we'll see what happens. Thank you. You guys have a good one.